What's crack, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. I'm Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football every Saturday. I'm bringing to y'all the top DraftKings and FanDuel plays of the week from my man, friend of the show, Joe Polka. Make sure you are following him on all the social medias, which will be linked down below. Before we get into the top DFS plays, I jump into a segment with monkeyknifefight.com, which is a player prop game website. Stop betting on the lines. Stop betting on the over-unders. Y'all never figure that out. There's a reason Vegas stays in business. We are fantasy players here. We know statistics. We know numbers. We know the pace of the games. Thus, player props is the way to go. Head over to monkeyknifefight.com. Use promo code BDGE when you sign up. You will get a 100% deposit match. Throw 20 down, play this weekend, trail my picks. You will get an extra 20 on top of that for using the promo, and we're going to be eating good this weekend. All right, so let's jump in. All right, welcome to the Monkey Knife Fight portion of today's video, which is all player props, our favorite player prop games for week three of fantasy football. For player props, we're going to head over to monkeyknifefight.com. If you are new to monkeyknifefight.com, it is the number one website to pay the mortgage, diversify the revenue via player prop games. Head over to monkeyknifefight.com. When you sign up, throw $10, throw $20 into your account, use promo code BDGE, and they will double whatever you throw down, 100% deposit match. So we're on monkeyknifefight.com new game we're gonna check out the games as always the way i try to pick them is looking at games i think we can exploit where they're gonna smash the over-unders where players are going to outperform whatever their projected player totals are there's one game i absolutely love on the slate that's the kansas city chiefs and the baltimore ravens man i am fucking excited for this game i don't know why they're playing it at one o'clock i don't know why this hasn't been flexed to prime time regardless kansas city chiefs baltimore ravens in kansas city last year these two teams played, went to overtime, they hit 51 points. We've seen this Ravens offense running, we've seen this Chiefs offense running, both are in full go, both are ready to score points. I actually really like the Ravens plus six and a half, but that's for y'all that are about to gamble on the game. This is for player props. I want to smash the overs on everything here. I want to smash it, I want to smash it, I want to smash it. My top play this week is hitting the over on both Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. 24 and a half fantasy points, 23 and a half fantasy points for the quarterbacks respectively. The reason I like the Ravens, I just look back to last year, right? They were like one of the only teams that could actually push the Chiefs in the regular season. They almost beat them. They lost to them in overtime. They were right there. And this was like a few weeks after Lamar Jackson took over. So it's not like they had their offense that they have this year that's running really smoothly. They were also playing against Harry Kill at the time. It was a game that the Ravens easily could have won. We're right there. I think they have the Chiefs number. I wouldn't be surprised if the Ravens went into Arrowhead and won this game outright, but I'll take the six and a half points if I'm betting on the Ravens. But I'm betting on both of these quarterbacks. This is the smash button that I'm going to go with right now. Now on monkeyknifefight.com, of course, they have tons of different like game options that you could choose from. They have the over-under for fantasy points. They have rapid fire for fantasy points. Patrick Mahomes versus Lamar Jackson, plus one and a half for Lamar Jackson. So if you think they're going to be within a few points of each other, but Lamar Jackson's getting the point and a half, then you take him. As always on the options, sometimes you have to get both of them correct. Like if it's only two that you're choosing from, you'll have to go two for two. Some of them give you the option of going three for four, as you'll see listed up here, three out of four. And then there's ones that you can go by statistics where it says, you know, passing yards, receptions, rushing yards, things like that. Or you can just go straight up fantasy points. So my number one smash play this week is going over on both of these quarterbacks. Now I know Baltimore is a good defense as they always are, but they're not unbeatable. They haven't gone up against any quality opponents. And obviously the Chiefs are, there's no defense for the Chiefs. That's that's really what it comes down to. So we're going over on Patrick Mahomes, 24 and a half. We're going over on Lamar Jackson, 23 and a half. This is a game that's going to be a lot of points, a lot of throwing. I think it's going to be a bounce back game for my man, Sammy Watkins. We'll throw 10 bucks on this and we'll win 26 dollars and 40 cents this is how we diversify the revenues this is how we pay the mortgage for week three so let's look at some other games on the, on the slate their entire offense is pretty much banged up so that's the second game we're probably going to exploit all right so i kind of like this rapid fire where you have to pick three out of three but you'll get five times the buy-in so we have philip rivers versus deshaun watson and deshaun watson's passing yardage is plus 31 and a half so if you're new to betting basically how this works is take the end total someone's getting 31 and a half so he's plus 31 and a half at the end you add 31 and a half passing yards to Deshaun Watson's total passing yardage number and if that puts him ahead of Philip Rivers then you won that bet so I'd go with Deshaun Watson then you have DeAndre Hopkins plus half a reception over Keenan Allen I'm going to do that as well I think I, I think this is a great bounce back game I know Casey Hayward has been very good man-to-man -man corner for the Chargers but I just think their secondary is too depleted and it's not like he's really played as a shutdown cornerback so far this year I think DeAndre Hopkins is one of those guys that can overcome basically anyone not named Jalen Ramsey. Now, the last one is tricky. Will Fuller, Mike Williams, because Will Fuller is so boomer bust 
So it's hard to get a read of, you know, what kind of involvement he's going to have. It's straight up. So you see Mike Williams is getting half a yard, which basically means it's a pick em. You just straight up choose whoever's going to get more receiving yards. I'm actually going to diversify a little bit here and go with Mike Williams. He looked really good last game. And obviously this Houston secondary is not a great one. I think they can get taken advantage of down the field and on deeper throws. And I'm not sure I trust Will Fuller yet. So I'm going to go with the Watson Hopkins stack and then go with Mike Williams plus a half a yard, which basically means he's just going to have more receiving yards than Will Fuller. That would be a stack I kind of like to mess around with. And then again, there are just like a million other things that you could look at here. Man, this is interesting right here. You got to pick two out of two fantasy points. Deshaun Watson or Austin Eckler? Austin Eckler is getting half a fantasy point. So I just think the smart money is obviously on Deshaun Watson. Eckler has been incredible, of course, but I think that is getting a little too cute if you're going to bet on Austin Eckler to outscore Deshaun Watson straight up in fantasy points. And Keenan Allen versus DeAndre Hopkins. The other thing to note is that this is full PPR. If you hit the little eye right here, it gives you the scoring for fantasy and you can see reception is one full point so this is full ppr which obviously gives keenan Allen a little bit of an advantage i think he's going to ball out too but i think this is a, a big game for deandre hopkins coming which is which i need because i have the deshaun watson deandre hopkins stack in multiple leagues so we're going to go with deandre hopkins plus half a fantasy point we're going to go to sean watson minus half a fantasy point over austin eckler those are my games of the week kc baltimore houston la chargers go to monkeyknifefight.com immediately Use the promo code BDGE when you sign up. They will give you 100% deposit match bonus on your $10, No, they don't go up to $1,000 with the deposit match. But start off simple. Trail. Go look around. You can go find games that you guys like. Obviously, you don't just have to trail my picks. I'm going to get some of this shit wrong. But Lions-Eagles, you like that game. Saints seahawks you like that game. Whatever it is, go mess around. You'll find something on here that you like. It'll make the games that much more enjoyable. Your fantasy team suck. You 0-2. This is something else that kind of make the games enjoyable at least because when you're 0-2 you got anxiety you got stress you're like fuck football at this point but not anymore with monkeyknifefight.com promo code bdge i love y'all let's head over to talk to joe and uh talk some dfs for this week thank you all for joining us today um as always joe is here to talk about the dfs portion of fantasy football for the week because that is his specialty and that is how he diversifies the revenue to put it simply now um you know, there are a lot of things to take in on the chart here, which we'll get into in a second. At the end of the video, we're going to do a Q&A, whether it's sit start or maybe some DFS uh, specific questions. That portion will not be on my YouTube channel. That will be over on Joe's Twitch stream. So you're going to have to go check that out afterwards. I will link that down below um, in the description. So when we're building a lineup for this week, I imagine there's a lot of madness going on because there was a lot of madness in the quarterback sphere of fantasy football, right? We had a lot of injuries, so we have a lot of young guns taking over, which impacts everybody, right? It impacts the running backs, it impacts wide receivers, but it also might possibly give you some values at the quarterback position. So um, I don't know if you want to dive into the chart first and kind of explain it, or maybe go into the different rows and columns as you're talking about your player analysis guys you like strategy for this week um so start us off joe what are you what are you thinking right now yeah let's do it um it is a weird week i'll, I'll say that with all those injuries we do have some quarterbacks at the very low end of the sal salary spectrum that we don't normally get like daniel jones 5k teddy bridgewater 4700 like kyle allen 4k it's just such a big kind of range normally on DraftKings in particular we don't get that range of uh of salaries at at least the quarterback position. So um, just to kind of talk about this sheet before we walk through it, um, it's the things that I think matter the most at the quarterback position. So um, red is typically bad. Um, green is typically good. Uh, that helps a little bit. I saw someone in the chat said they're colorblind. I, I don't have a, I don't have a chart for you then, Steve. I'm really sorry, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll try and maybe figure something out, like, out uh, for you later on. But um, I, the one thing that I think is definitely important, um, but isn't something I look at near as much as I looked at before, and that's the Vegas line. So um, home favorite quarterbacks um, is definitely uh, a big time uh, identifier for finding um, some of the best quarterbacks of the week. Team totals um, are huge as well. Um, but what I've found is that um, a lot of times the pricing really mirrors Vegas lines. So actually, when you get to some of these super high Vegas totals, a lot of times um, they'll be priced up to a spot where they're much harder to, to hit value. So what I found is kind of the sweet spot is like just outside of that, that top tier of implied totals. You can find these all over the internet, um, but it's nice to have them right here in one spot. So I do look at that for more context than anything else. There's a few stats that really matter at the running back position. Um, so we know that guys, we talk about Josh, Josh Allen all the time. It's because he 
rushes the football and he throws deep. So at quarterback, we want guys with a high yards per attempt. Um, that's probably uh, the best efficiency metric there is at quarterback. Um, so we don't have a great sample yet this season. Um, ideally, you want uh, a much larger sample. So that's why this is a little bit more simple than it will be later in the season. Um, but average intended air yards, yards per attempt, it's basically just a, a way of saying we want quarterbacks that throw deep. Um, so um, I also have uh, a column here for, for quarterbacks yards per attempt while under pressure or while kind of in a clean pocket. So anytime we think that a team is going to see a lot of pressure, I, I want to see how well they do um, with that pressure as well. So I think that one that always stands out to me is Deshaun Watson. He was almost as efficient while under pressure last year than he was in a clean pocket. So he's the guy that would perform really well in that metric. And then there's there's certain guys that, that don't perform well under pressure as well. So I, I want to know that. Um, this is, again, just a three-week sample, so not as valuable. Um, and then we're kind of looking at a couple of next-gen stats. Those are free as well. Um, just trying to look at a quarterback's completion percentage um, compared to what they're expected to do. So um, super, I, I guess, not that simple. Um, but if you had to look at one number in this entire column, yards per attempt, and then maybe throw in a guy that has some rushing upside is kind of what I would say um, at the quarterback position. Is this just totally over your head, Nick, or are we good to go? No, you're good to go. It's, it's kind of the same uh, thing that I tell to my audience, especially when they're trying to stream quarterbacks. I'm like, listen, if you're looking for a waiver wire pickup, if you're looking for a guy to stream, you want one of two things in your quarterbacks, you know, preferably both of them. It's one, you need to either be able to run the ball or two, you take shots down the field. And that will usually equate into yards per attempt if you're accurate whatsoever. So um, that makes sense. For sure. Yeah, and the, re the rest of this stuff is just pure game environment stuff, and it's so, so early in the season. I, I really want to just pay attention to, to games and to situations where there's going to be a lot of plays in general or the other side where I don't think there's going to be a lot of plays. So um, one that stands out right away this week is this Arizona and Carolina game. Um, I've got it ranked as the fastest pace game on the entire slate, which makes some sense. Like Arizona is actually top three in offensive pass percentage. Um, if we look to that uh, that next game that I really like, Cincinnati and Buffalo. Cincinnati is the highest percentage pass team in the entire league. So it makes sense, right? More plays because there's more incomplete passes. It's one thing that we've talked about a couple times now on your channel. So um, I like the idea of that. Um, I also want to see which teams are going to be running the most plays. So um, Baltimore, even though we don't um, necessarily know exactly um, what the pace overall in that game is going to be like, I do like that game. And they're kind of projected right now for the most plays on the entire slate against KC. We know KC always gives up a ton of plays because of how efficient they are um, on offense. So um, that's kind of the interesting thing, right? Like KC, it might be a fast paced game, but KC, I have them projected for not near as many plays, as even some of the ones in the mid range. So that, that worries me a little bit with how expensive some of the Chiefs guys are this week. Um, and then we get got teams like Carolina, um, Detroit, uh, Dallas that are implied for just so many plays this week that I, re I really do like those situations. Uh, a couple games that I'm actively trying to avoid this week. Uh, Minnesota is definitely one, but I'll start with Green Bay and Denver. Um, both of these teams are running at a super low pace. Um, and then also they're just not projected to, to run many plays in general. So I I'm, I'm more or not like just trying to avoid those teams if I can. Um, same thing with Oakland and Minnesota, like Dalvin Cook is going to be really popular running back who we'll talk about. I think he's probably the only guy I'm really considering at this point um, in that game. So we'll talk about that. Um, so as far as like this week's concerned, um, some of the, the top quarterbacks, I think Lamar Jackson is going to just draw a ton of ownership for sure. Um, he is way more expensive than we've seen in past weeks. And, and sometimes it makes sense to, to pay up for these guys. But um, at times like, like this week where we just have so many options that are just extremely cheap. Um, you do at least have to kind of mess around with options without him as well. I think that it's going to be pretty spread out at quarterbacks. So you don't have to worry a ton about ownership. I would imagine that Mahomes, Lamar will be right there. Um, a guy that I'm looking at this week is uh, Dak Prescott. Um, maybe just play guys against Miami um, is kind of the, the way to go um, this year. But what I mentioned before, yards per attempt, 9.66 yards per attempt, uh, leading the league um, in that category to start the year. Um, he doesn't offer as much rushing upside as someone um, like Lamar Jackson, obviously, or even um, some of these other guys like Josh Allen, who I really like again. Um, but I think that Dak is is going to be kind of the chalk quarterback against Miami. I guess, I guess the the issue is if it's going to be a spread that is this big, like 
you better hope that Zeke doesn't get those touchdowns because Dak's going to be in some trouble if this game gets out of hand. So I guess that's kind of the, the wrinkle um, in, in favor of some of these other guys. I do think that there's a couple of guys that are interesting at the cheaper end. Um, Daniel Jones at 5K. Um, I, I don't normally like to, to kind of target a team total that's this low, um, but he is going to offer a little bit on the ground. He's a guy that looked amazing in the preseason. So um, we've seen it before. Um, I think that there's a chance that maybe the Giants are a little bit reinvigorated by not having Eli Manning back there. I um, mean, he's 5K, so it allows you to do a lot uh, with the rest of your team for sure. Um, Kyle Allen's not someone that I've been super impressed with in the limited action we've seen. Um, but 4K, I mean, that just does a lot, um, depending on what you're going to try and spend up for at other positions. So um, I think if I had a favorite guy to pay down for, it's probably going to be Daniel Jones um, against Tampa Bay. But um, I mean, it, it gets thin down there quick. Uh, who, who are you talking about, I guess, from a, from a streaming perspective and season long? Are we kind of on some of the same guys? Uh, yeah, we're definitely on some of the same, same guys. I like Josh Allen a lot because um, he's going against Cincinnati, of course, but he's going to be a little bit more expensive. I wouldn't really touch the top guys in Lamar and Patrick Mahomes just because a lot of the you know, reasons that you laid out for, they'll be very highly owned. Um, and if anything goes wrong, then it kind of, you know, messes with your team because the running backs this week that you're going to need to grab are probably the very, very expensive ones. I kind of like Kyle, uh, Kyle Allen. Um, I know you didn't like him from just like uh, what, what you've seen in very limited sample size, but I think they'll be efficient enough going against the Arizona defense, um, just dumping it off consistently to yep. – uh, Chris McCaffrey, where his yards will eventually get there. And he's a guy that actually, I mean, his numbers were pretty good in, in the game that he started last year. He threw for two touchdowns. He also added one on the ground. But I, if I'm, if I'm going to pay down for quarterback, it's probably going to be Daniel Jones. Um, I think yeah. that Tampa Bay won. I mean, they've been a very, very improved defense. Todd Bowles has really, like, righted the ship there. It's funny because, like, a lot of these coordinators, when they try to become head coaches, it just it, – it, it goes miserably, right? They're just not leaders of teams. And then when they go back to doing their coordinator position, it's like they are, they're just so, they're back in home, right? And they're so good at doing what they do just very specifically. And it looks like that's what Todd Bowles has done with his defense that was so bad last year. What I think they're going to do is put the pressure on Daniel Jones. I think they're going to, you know, go all out on him and they're going to be blitzing him consistently and they're going to try to make him, you know, use his legs. And I think that's what we'll see because he's a very underrated athlete, right? And I, I'd imagine they're going to blitz him constantly and that's going to lead to um, a pretty nice floor of rushing yards I imagine he's going to be scrambling out of the pocket a lot which will also open up wide receivers for him um, just running across the field and stuff so I like the I like the chance of Daniel Jones adding four or five points just via his legs maybe he gets in the end zone I'm not really you know you can never really predict those kind of things um, so I like DJ the only thing that concerns me with Dak is like we talked about this with Tom Brady last week how they were such big favorites and we're like you know in order to hit that uh, total, right, the, the point total for your team, you obviously have to put up points. But this seems like a game where Zeke's going to get 25-plus carries. And whereas the Patriots, once they get up on a team like the Jets or the, or the Miami Dolphins or something, they don't take their foot off the pedal. You know, like they'll keep passing the ball and they'll keep throwing touchdowns. Whereas I think Dallas, you know, I mean, they have the new offensive coordinator, but I wouldn't say that, like, they're ready to go, like, full Patriots. And I think once they get up a few touchdowns, it's just going to be the Zeke show. And, you know, Dak, Dak will be without Michael Gallup. So um, that yards per attempt number might come down because he's been such a good, you know, downfield threat for them. So I like Dak as a floor play, but he's probably not someone I would be considering in DFS. Obviously, he's like a top six or eight option in, uh, in season long. But sure. paying down, I kind of like Daniel Jones a lot. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think Daniel Jones definitely in play. And who knows, I might make it to Kyle Allen just because I like so many options for Carolina. Uh, it might just make sense at that point at 4K. Um, but I think that's probably about good at, um, at quarterback this week. I, I do think that if there's any type of tiebreaker, I'm almost always skewing to someone that's going to give me some rushing equity. So um, that's kind of it for, for the, the quarterback side of things. Should we move on to, to running back then? Yeah, I mean, I, I think like paying down for running back and a guy like Daniel Jones works so well this week because it's like you can't fade Zeke, who's 8,900 on DraftKings. And then you have Dalvin Cook, who you said is probably the only guy you're looking towards. I mean, Minnesota should probably wipe the floor with Oakland and continue to ground and pound. So you have Zeke at 89, you have Dalvin Cook at 7,800. It's like, I can't imagine a scenario where you kind of fade those guys, right? Yeah, like Dalvin's at 7,800. He's going to be probably one of the highest owned players on the entire slate. I, I do have at least some concerns, right? So like, um, I'm not sure he's the same as McCaffrey, Zeke, Saquon, as far as his usage, right? Because we know they're not going to pass as much in Minnesota anyway. So like the 
the target share involved is a little bit skewed when they're only throwing the ball 15, 20 times a game, something like that. So his ceiling through the air, um, I mean, they're more valuable. To, it's more value. It's always more valuable to get targets than it is to get rush attempts, right? Especially in, in DFS. So like someone, Dalvin Cook at 7,800, I, I think it's at least uh, something we should talk about going to Austin Eckler again, at least he's going to, he's going to see the ball less times, but he's going to see more valuable touches. And I think that that's something that, that definitely makes sense. Like I've got Eckler actually projected for the most uh, receptions right now in the entire week. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, not far behind him. Um, I'm not so much on Le'Veon. I, I guess I, I can't get behind playing a running back with a team total that's under 12. I, that's just not something <laughs> that I, I typically do. He's going to um, touch the ball 45 times though. What's going to happen? He's going to go 45 for like, 75 total yards it's gonna be so, yeah and like in zero touchdowns because they're not gonna score or something like that like i don't know like I, I, at that point you're you're all the way at 7k right like you can find the extra salary to get up to some of these elite guys uh christian mccaffrey shocker is uh my favorite back on the slate um i've got him projected for an insane amount of touches mostly because of how many plays i think that they're gonna run and yeah if, if the the quarterback just ends up throwing kind of like these safer balls if he sees any pressure whatsoever like christian mccaffrey's gonna eat um, I'm interested in him for sure, even on the road, decent team total there. Um, pretty tight spread. That's one thing that I do look for um, is looking at pass catching running backs. Is I mean, it's not like Christian McCaffrey's ever going to be kind of game script out, but um, I do think that that's a decent thing to look at for sure. Um, but yeah, I think Le'Veon, like you can definitely project him for a ton of touches. I just don't know how valuable they are. Dalvin's going to be piled on. Um, I'm trying to figure out ways to play Christian McCaffrey and Zeke together. Um, you have to go super cheap at wide receiver to do it. But with the value we have at quarterback, it's, it's very doable. Um, I think that Zeke is, is finally in a spot where hopefully they get scale him up. Um, they've been kind of easing him back in, right? The guy was in Cabo like three weeks ago, it feels like. Uh, but um, I think that Zeke, it's finally the week to kind of go to him against Miami. Like you could see them get up on this game, obviously, but he might have two touchdowns before it even matters. So um, I think that he's totally fine at 8,900. Um, I think that if you wanted to go to Saquon, he'll be by far the lowest owned of that category. Um, but I still think that he still has the the volume too. Like any of these guys are totally fine. I'm curious your thoughts on Alvin Kamara with Teddy Bridgewater though. Like from a game theory perspective in DFS, like I'm, I'm tempted just because everyone wanted to play him last week and he kind of failed us. Um, normally that's a good time to kind of jump back on, but I'm kind of scared of this, uh, this Bridgewater led uh, Saints team to be honest. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely nervous. I mean, from what we saw, like once Teddy went in the game, it it seemed like Alvin Kamara, not that he was phased out, but it's like it has to give you some nerves if you're a season long owner because what's gonna happen in, in the screen game, right? They ran so many plays for Kamara and it's not like, you know, most of those throws are short, right? Their average depth of target is, is very low, but like Breeze is just so accurate and he just runs the offense so well. Um, so it's like, I I'm nervous when it comes to the screen game. I'm nervous when they put Alvin Kamara out wide, like is Teddy Bridgewater going to be able to get him the ball? Cause he needs every single one of those to be accurate in order for Alvin Kamara to be Alvin Kamara. I also like, I don't know if the numbers back this up. I know that his snap count went down from like 75% to maybe like 65, 66 in the second game. Do they turn to Latavius Murray a little bit more? Awesome. Do they try to pound the ball a little bit more, you know, and lean on the run game? Because I mean, maybe they try to lean on their defense and they come away from this six game skid without Breeze, three and three, maybe four and two if their defense can play lights out. And if that's the case, they're not going to be a team that's going to try to, you know, pass the ball a ton with Teddy Bridgewater. He's going to be a very low volume quarterback. So uh, Kamara's a guy where I need to see it probably before I'm going to be throwing him into anything other than like tourna tournament lineups. But like yeah. in terms of guys, you know, if you're going to get Zeke or if you're going to get McCaffrey in your lineup, I, I don't see. You know, most weeks you can find an injury where there's a really cheap running back that makes his way into your lineup because of, um, you know, the pricing and stuff and how they have to value the guys. I, I see almost nothing at the bottom of the list when it comes to running backs this week for, for cheaper plays. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't pay down a running back typically anyways, but, I mean, Darwin Thompson, maybe, if McCoy doesn't play. I think that's uh, something that people yeah, will be yeah, on. Um, that's it. Not sure has been ruled out. Yeah, uh, so McCoy's still got that ankle thing, right? So. I don't yeah, know. It'll be modern. it'll be an interesting one there uh, to see what happens. I don't know if it's for me, but at three K, like that's his, I mean Stone Man basically. So um, it, it's tougher at running back past those top guys, right? Like I have concerns about about Carson, but fifty nine hundred, he's rating out as a really strong value this week. Yeah. Um, so I think that he's interesting for sure. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now uh, on running back. I'm su I have a super small pool right now. I think it's like trying to figure out which of these top guys that I like, but. 
I'm not near as interested in a lot of these other guys um, that are past that range. Like I'm not interested in Josh, Josh Jacobs at Minnesota. Um, I think that he's probably okay, um, but he just doesn't offer much in the passing game, or at least we haven't seen them involve him in the passing game enough for me um, to kind of go there. Um, so that's pretty much all I have at running back. You want to move on to wide receiver? Yeah, just one more thing. I'm, I, I'm, I'm in on Chris Carson this week too. I think everyone's going to be scared off of him just because of the, you know, the fumbling and Rash, Rashad Penny finally having like somewhat of a, a I will say a useful game for the first time mm-hmm. this year. So um, people will remember that obviously the recency bias and probably faith Chris Carson this week. But I think as long as Chris Carson goes to the, goes into the game healthy, he's the clear workhorse there. And he was getting a ridiculous amount of tar. I believe he was like, um, I, f- I forget what the percentage was, but he's top five in the league in terms of, target share on his team. I think he's seeing 18 to 19% of the targets. So um, the numbers don't lie there. And he's going to continue to get targets, I think, as long as he's healthy. Fumbling issue, of course, might be a long-term concern, but it's not a week-over-week thing. For sure. All right, let's move on to wide receivers. I'll, I'll walk through a couple of these stats because I've talked about them on your stream before, but it's it's really simple, honestly. Like, the Vegas stuff is always just kind of here for context. Same thing with the the, the pace. But the, the one number that I'm almost always looking at at wide receiver – it's called a uh, weighted opportunity rating. It's free at airyards.com. Uh, shout out Josh Hermsmeyer. Um, but it basically takes into effect target share and air yards. So it's like basically the two most important things that wide receiver baked into one metric. So um, Keenan Allen is leading the way um, through the first three weeks, at least on this slate. He's only 7K. So if I'm paying up, uh, I don't really see it. Uh, a ton of reason to go all the way up to Michael Thomas at that price with Teddy Bridgewater, um, DeAndre Hopkins. I, I think that there's there's definitely pace concerns in that game. Um, so I'm interested in Keenan Allen at 7K at the top end. Um, another thing that is really important on my sheet is yards per route run. Um, so that's something that I'm looking at quite a bit. That's a pro football fo- focus number. That leads you right to uh, what well, might be our boy this week, uh, Devin Smith, 3,400. Um, if they end up inserting him right into that Michael Gallup role, I mean, he's, he was a second round pick. Like this kid could be um, a talent that just kind of ran into injury trouble. Right. So I I think that um, Smith is definitely interesting if he ends up getting a full complement of snaps at 3,400 just for his, his air yards and and that role basically against Miami high team total. We know team total is really important at wide receiver. So uh, I'm interested in Devin Smith at the cheap end. I think a lot of people will go to Nelson Aguilar at 3,700. Um, I, I think he's probably going to avoid slay most of the game anyway. Um, not that I really care about um, cornerback matchups, um, but um, that's the one that I, w- I would go on um, if I wanted a little bit more safety. I think he'll be um, pretty heavily owned, honestly, um, at that price. Um, someone kind of in the mid range that I almost always um, am on, John Brown, 5,500. Um, I guess I think that the Cincinnati team is probably better than they've showed. Um, but I just love Josh Allen to John Brown. Like in, until that fails me, their prices really haven't gotten out of control yet. Um, but John Brown at 5,500 really stands out. I mean, he's top eight in weighted opportunity rating on this slate and he's only 5,500. So um, DK Metcalf, like if, if you think that some of these other um, guys will end up being um, more heavily owned, he's a guy that we could get a lower ownership that has shown a ton of upside. Um, and we know we can beat New Orleans deep as well. So um, those are kind of the initial guys that uh, that I'm looking at. But um, anything else that you're looking at from a season long perspective that I should take a look at, like price and whatnot? Um, well, one I would say I feel like Nelson Aguilar might be 95% owned. I think he was probably like the top pickup this week because Jaws and yeah. Alshon are both going to be out, and uh, mm-hmm. Nelson played like 75 to 85% of the snaps that he got last week in the slot, so he should yeah. avoid Slay for the most part. Um, one thing I'm kind of interested in, right? We talked about Daniel Jones uh, against Tampa Bay, but what about on the flip side, right? Because we haven't really seen the Tampa Bay breakout game on offense, and who knows if it's coming? But Godwin is Godwin is priced. Uh, where's Where's Mike Evans? Yeah, so he's Godwin's actually like- more than Mike Evans. So if I get sort by salary, um, so Mike Evans, Godwin's is 6,900. Mike Evans is 6,600. This is the first time I think ever, honestly, that Mike Evans has been priced below Godwin. So that's, I mean, that's a great call. I think that um, going back to them, especially Evans, if people are down on him, like his usage is still really strong. Um, so Godwin, first looking at, again, weighted opportunity rating, 0.57 for Godwin. Like Evans is still at 0.58. It's, it's basically the same usage. Like we just haven't really seen those big plays um, really work out for Evans yet, but it could be coming. I, I love him this week in tournaments. Yeah, I think that's going to be really interesting to see how that game unfolds. I even like, like as a very contrarian play, if we want to move over to the tight end position, 
Like OJ Howard obviously has gotten nothing going, but at 3,800, I almost don't hate the Winston Evans uh, Howard stack because I mean, if there's going to be a game to do it, it's going to be this one, right? Because they've been talking about it all week. There has to be some sort of a game plan going into this to try to spark their passing game. Maybe they set up a couple plays for OJ Howard, whether it's in the screen game or downfield or something. Like the New York Giants are awful at defending the pass, especially against tight ends. And they've been historically bad against tight ends for like three or four years running now. So if there's a get right game for OJ Howard and Jameis Winston, it's got to be this week at home against the Giants, right? I'm with you, man. Uh, I, I am a little bit concerned just because of the amount of routes he's been running. Like 42 routes through two games is really low um, yeah. for a tight end based on some of the guys that we're considering. But yeah, I originally thought that that Howard would be uh, kind of sneaky, but like people are kind of on it right now in DFS because of his price, right? He's 3,800. Um, but you never know. I think that there's still people that will go. Um, there's, there's other guys that I think will be more popular at tight end this week. I, I think most people are going to pay up for George Kittle or Zach Ertz, um, which I'm kind of on that train yeah. right now as well. Um, I think that Kittle in particular at, at 5,600, like if we looked at him at like a wide receiver price, like we would be all in on George Kittle based on his usage. So um, what, about, uh, what about Mark Andrews? Like, are you considering him almost into that elite tier now or, or have we not seen enough usage yet? He's 4,600. So his price is still really strong. Um, I mean, his, at some point his, like his yards per hour on all that's going to go down. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's probably not going to be this week against KC, right? You might have one more week at least uh, to fire at Mark Andrews, uh, especially if you're on the, the Lamar train still. Like, I mean, everything looks great from, from his perspective. Um, I'm not sure if he's like this athletic freak that we have from like Kelsey and Kittle, but I mean, he's not priced that way yet, at least. So he's not too um, far off, man. His, his athletic profile is really impressive, and that's why I think, yeah. you know, uh, made him such a strong, like, breakout sleeper candidate in the offseason. He's probably a better athlete than Zach Ertz, if I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, Zach Ertz is probably going to get it and fall down most of the time. So, yeah, I'm with you there. Um, I, I think that, like, he's actually more expensive than Kittle on FanDuel. So, FanDuel got aggressive with Andrews. Um, on DraftKings, his price is still really nice. Um, so, I think that that's, that's something to kind of monitor. One guy that I've kind of been bringing up, um, especially if O.J. Howard ends up being popular, if not, Maybe he's the play, but I mean, Greg Olson at 3,700. I love this Carolina game. He's just so cheap. Um, he's still going to see a decent uh, kind of target share. I'm not sure how big the ceiling is on a guy like that, but from, from a DFS perspective, his price uh, allows you to do a lot. And especially if we're going to try and play these running backs and you maybe you don't want to pay all the way down at quarterback, like you're going to need to save somewhere, right? So it's kind of a, it's, it's an interesting week at tight end. Last week, we had like three really cheap options that I thought were really strong. I don't love the cheap options this week um, in general. Like Howard, Howard's actually one of the top guys in my model right now. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm still kind of piecing my way through it. I, I don't love any of those guys down there. Yeah, Greg Olson is intriguing. Uh, the only thing that scares me is just like if you watched him play last week, he looks like he could pass away on the field at any point. Like he's getting open right over the middle of the field and he's catching the balls, but it looks, it looks like he's playing with a broken back. Like he can't really run with the ball after he catches it. But I went back and looked at uh, Kyle Allen, his basically small sample size last year. He threw – he started week 17. He, for some reason, got four pass attempts in week 16. So, total of 31 pass attempts. Of those 31, seven of them went to Ian Thomas, who was the starting tight end when Greg Olson um, was out towards the end of last year. So, it seems like Kyle Allen is going to be a guy who's not necessarily targeting his outside wide receivers downfield. Ian Thomas got a lot of uh, targets. Christian McCaffrey was a guy who – Literally only played 14 snaps, but he got three of three targets from Kyle Allen there. So he could be a short dump off guy. I do like Greg Olson and the fact that, you know, if this is if you're going full PPR, um, I wouldn't be surprised if Will Disley's pretty high owned that he was snagged and there was some some serious fab budget spent on uh, on Disley this week in, in the waiver wire, which I cannot agree with. I mean, he just he keeps making it happen. But like, I can, like, how can you possibly be on board with him? Makes no sense. Yeah, he just doesn't really pop in anything that I like value, to be honest. Um, yeah. it is, it's, it's basically if he catches those touchdowns, great, but his usage is still like really thin compared to a lot of other guys uh, that we could go after. Uh, for any of them that's watching this on YouTube later in the chat, Doozy said Cam Brait week incoming uh, with uh, <laughs> everyone on, on, on Howard. That would definitely make sense. Um, but yeah, I think tight ends, it's always a tough position, right? Like I mentioned this every week, but I'm almost always trying to pay all the way up or pay all the way down. I think this is a good week to pay up for someone like Ertz um, or pay up for someone like uh, like Kittle um, because yeah. I think you do have the salary to do it and those guys are in 
phenomenal spots. I feel like they're just like drastically underpriced relative to what they normally would be like on a slate like this. So, um, but yeah, man, that's pretty much where I'm at on tight ends. Um, I could talk a little bit about defense too, but that's, that's, uh, it's probably time to jump into some Q and a pretty soon too. Yeah, for sure. I just want to get your take on one more guy It's Jason, mm -hmm. Jason Witten. So he's yeah. gotten, he's gotten four targets back to back weeks. He scored a touchdown in back to back weeks and now they're going against Miami and they don't have Michael Gallup. And, you know, all these goal line touches could end up being Zeke's, but maybe Witten walks away from this game with another touchdown, another two touchdowns. I mean, you should see a little bit of an increased usage in the passing game, um, given Gallup's absence. Uh, but I, wanna, I wanted to gauge your thought process on him. Is, is uh, our touchdown dependent guys just guys that you stay away from? No, I mean, I think he's fine. I mean, 3,700 is still a price that it's not like, it's not like you can't um, jam him in there. I mean, if we're considering – um, some of these other guys like Howard or um, like just in general, some of those cheaper guys like Greg Olson, like he's, I mean, he's in the highest total game on the slate. Right. So like, that's always something that matters at tight end His his target share is fine. It's not fantastic. That's why he's 3,700. But again, if, yeah, if Gallup's out and everyone just wants to kind of fire at uh, these, these deeper targets that he leaves behind, it's possible that Dak just ends up checking down a little bit more to Witten and you don't really need near as much to get there at 3,700. So yeah, I think he's fine. I think it, if you're trying to get, um, I guess, lower ownership on Dallas, like he's probably the guy you want. Like he's going to come in much lower than anyone else um, in that passing game. So um, the upside, yeah, maybe he's going to need a touchdown, maybe two uh, to really get you there. But I don't think he's, I don't think he's going to kill you by any means. Yeah, I was just kind of asking for confirmation bias because in the league guy lost Hunter Henry. I've just been picking up random tight ends left and right. Jimmy Graham threw up a zero for me last week. So I went out, grabbed Demetrius Harris, David Njoku's backup, and then uh, Jason Witten as well. So I'm kind of trying to decide who to stream this week, but it's probably going to end up being Witten, hoping that he gets, you know, five targets and can find the end zone in that game that Dallas should score 35 points. Yeah, I think that he's – I mean – He's totally fine. And, and I think from a DFS perspective, it's totally different than season long. Like season long, he's definitely plugs a hole for you for sure. Um, yeah. DFS, sometimes you're looking for a little bit more upside. Um, so at defense, uh, I'm, I'm not going to bring up my defense sheet because it's a little bit more involved and it's not near as good as it is uh, by the end of the, or by the even a couple more weeks of data. So I think maybe we just talk about some of these quarterbacks that we'd want to kind of target um at defense like the most expensive ones patriots cowboys like the chess and dolphins are um, clearly targets for us in dfs almost everyone is going to feel like paying up is the way to go after what happened last week with new england who you needed absolutely to win a tournament last week um i think it's it's interesting i don't know if this is the week where i'm just going to start firing at expensive defenses typically it's a position that that i pay down for um, more often than not um, so I think there's a couple of defenses on DraftKings that that make some sense at like the lower end of the salary spectrum. I think that Detroit against Philly is at least interesting because Philly is so shorthanded and they're only 2,200. They're like almost the stone mint. Um, so I think that there, there's not a lot of defenses either that are at home on the cheap end of things as well. Like I could see maybe going after the Chargers against Houston, like Watson will take sacks. Um, that offensive line is horrendous. Um, so I could see that. That's probably – the option that um, I could see myself um, going towards. I guess I, I hate playing defenses where there's just not going to be a, a great pace in that game, but I don't think there's like a stand, like a standout option really. Like maybe Seattle against New Orleans, but then Teddy Bridgewater doesn't really, he's, he's so safe. He doesn't turn it over a ton anyway. Um, and they're 3,200. They're really not cheap. So um, defense is pretty tough this week. Um, I mean, you, if you have the salary, by all means, pay up for the Patriots or Cowboys. Like, that's one of the biggest things that there is just trying to get game script. Right. So if these guys are going to be way ahead, um, hopefully the other team's going to be making some mistakes. Yeah. I'm shocked that new England is $500 less than Dallas. Like I get they're going against Miami, but it's like the, what are the jets without uh, Darnold? Yeah. You know what I mean? And the Patriots right. are probably the best defense in the league, if not like top three, but it's funny how you have the top, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight or nine defenses all at home, all favorites, um, I mean, if I'm going to stream, I, I do like your the call on Detroit Philly just because they're very, you know, bruised and battered. But I don't think I'll ever take an away team when I don't have to. What I think yeah. is actually a uh, sneaky, okay defense is Tampa Bay at 2,900. Because like I said before, I mean, one, they're like six-point favorites. They're at home. Um, and Todd Bowles has his defense clicking right now. So yeah. if they do what I expect them to do and put a lot of pressure on Daniel Jones, that could lead to a lot of, you know, poor throws or a lot of sacks and possibly strip sacks and things like that. So 
Uh, if I'm going to pay down, I kind of like that Tampa Bay um, at home versus New York Giants for 29. Yeah, I still think that Tampa Bay is like underrated based on like what their talent is too on defense. So I, I love that call. Uh, it's just hard to like look past like some of the best spots, right? Because like Dallas on both sides of the ball should just absolutely dominate the line of scrimmage. But like yeah. Josh Rosen, like he takes the third most sacks on the slate. Like he throws picks, like even, um, I don't know, like the Dallas side of it is is really intriguing. Um, I'm interested in that. I do think that the Chargers at 2,500 are end up going to end up being a really – nice value um i think that if we look past that like i don't know atlanta against jacoby Brissett, another guy that takes sacks but you're kind of just grasping for straws at that point maybe carolina against arizona because we just expect there to be a lot of plays in that game um but i think it's pretty condensed on where the ownership is going to be this week at defense and i think a lot of people are going to pay up yeah that makes sense i mean defense is i don't know i i just i can't imagine Fuck, I have to I have to go against the Patriots in like two out of the three season long leagues I'm in, so I'm just like <laughs> I'm, I'm just dreading that. I feel like that's almost a a weak loser for me. Um, so that being said, that will wrap up our DFS talk for this week. Uh, we're gonna get into Q and A questions. If you are on my YouTube channel, you're gonna have to head over to Joe's Twitch stream. So it's twitch.tv slash Joe Hoka. Again, will be linked in the description to go check out some of the Q and A questions that we answered after this DFS portion make sure you smash that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video make sure you're following joe on all the social medias link down below make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new we are coming at you every single day with fantasy football content thank you all for joining us so we are out of here <laughs>